<sighs> Hi guys, what's up everybody? Russ here with rwgresearch.com uh, because that's what I do. Anyway, um, okay, so this is installment number five of the Honda Habit PA52 uh, 1983 rebuild and upgrade hot rod. So let me show you what I've currently got and I've just got it sitting here so you can see um, definitely need a better shot so let's move this thing whoa 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 okay so I kinda just have it sitting in the middle here instead of on my bench so I can show you what I've done so I've uh, I've put the belt on here and I've put the variator on here and um, this fits really tight works really well this does uh, and should slip nicely um, the back wheel is put back together, the back brake is put back together. Um, I did order different pedals, and the reason I did that is because the other pedals were bent. So the chain is back on here. Um, I did not film anything, I was just trying to get this thing done. I'm limited on time. So there you can see the chain is nicely put on there, it looks a little rusty. Um, and I need to re-grease it. I cleaned it extremely well with some like mineral spirits type stuff so I need to go back and re-grease everything really well. Um, but I want to clean it to make sure the chain was still good. The chain actually looks really good. Um, I did take this cover off. The Everything in there looks fine. I'm not going to take that apart. Um, I did have a cracked frame and I I have a welder. The, the welder you guys know the welder. Remember the welder I used for all my crazy experiments that was like for tests and I put it back together and I couldn't figure out I re-upgraded the diodes in it because it blew all the diodes apart. So I upgraded the diodes and couldn't figure out how to function, put it in right. I, I had it half wave bridge rectified instead of full wave bridge rectified and that was the entire problem I had with that thing. So I fixed it but I didn't have any welding gas. So I configured it to weld um, without the welding gas and you can see that it looks like crap. But here's the thing, that's all I got right now. Um, I could have brought it up to the laboratory and welded it but we still don't have a MIG welder, we only got a stick welder. So I welded the front and the back and actually it welded fairly well, it looks like crap but it welded really well. Um, as far as like enough material around it to hold it together, it's fine. Um, I mean really the whole entire apparatus, the motor, is supported to that bracket so it's not a really big deal. Um, but it does support the whole back of the bike so it's kind of important. But I think it's fine, it wasn't cracked that bad, it was still looking pretty good, it wasn't stretched out so there's not as much force in that one spot as, you know, someone may think. Um, so there's, there's that, um, let me move it and we can get a better shot and better angle of what I'm trying to show you here so let's move to the next stage alright so the shot is quite at an interesting angle but let me zoom in and see if we can show what I want to show here so currently the carburetor maybe I can turn this a little the carburetor that I bought a new one um, I bought a new carburetor and this is what it looks like. It's a wider diameter for more air input and a different fuel ratio because I'm putting a different head on this. So, um, this will fit in there. Um, and I don't remember how I got it in there. Without, oh, I had that other part out. Anyway, this does fit in there one way or another. Maybe I should have done this before I started. Ah, well. I got these nuts on here. Ah, nuts. Anyway, there we go. So, you can see here that this is level right here. And the frame of this bike is about right there. Okay bad angle right there and uh, the problem with this carburetor is that the 
throttle comes out of the top. Now I can angle this up to 40 or 40 or 30 degrees or something. So I can angle it down and I can get an angled port here and still make it all function. I think it would still work. Um, but here's the thing. I have to make a new housing here or a new bushing here. And I got to widen this whole plate out. Um, and I, I just have to do some extreme things and I gotta buy different cables and just all sorts of stuff so I am not going to use this carburetor for now for now just to get this thing running I'm going to use the standard carburetor and you can see the let's see like this you can see the height difference big big difference in height okay big difference look how far that thing sticks up so this throttle is um, a butterfly valve and that throttle is actually a throat-like valve where it just opens. See it? So it's it's different. That's why the function is different on top. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original carburetor. And you can modify these. You can open up the ports just a little bit, but I'm not going to do that. Um, the other the other problem I have is the the filter in order to get the filter on here somewhere and make it work without cutting this out um, I, I, I'm okay with cutting this out, but the fender comes down here and the other problem is the fact that this sticks out of the top the when the shocks ex, uh, Absorb the impact this whole thing moves towards the frame And so I have to make sure that even if it bottoms out it doesn't get caught so I'm not doing that I'm putting the original car back on here and I can open up the inside of the diameter of this and make it function slightly better. I do have the bowl off the bottom. Um, interestingly, one of the problems that I'm having is that the carburetor, you can see uh, the port in the bottom. Yeah, the screw is missing and it's a needle jet port. So I'll either have to machine one or uh, I'm not sure yet, find one somewhere. So that's the carburetor problem. I'm going to just forget about the carburetor um, uh, upgrade and I might look for a different carburetor and I, it's really simple to pull this back apart and um, reconfigure it. So it's not a huge deal to come back and do that later. But for now I need to get this thing up and running as soon as possible. Um, so that's what I've done. So let's move on to the head because I've got some issues there as well. Okay, so here's the... Uh, this is going to be a little hard to work on at this angle, but it works well for the camera, so so be it. So here's the new uh, the new head, and uh, it is 70 cc's. The other one is 50, and it does come with this gasket, which actually I had to trim out a little bit because it was a little bit too tight around the center. I need to go just a little bit more. And uh, I knew this coming into it that I'm going to have to make this um, longer. So let me pull this all the way out to its far stroke, okay? I'm going to grab the uh, the piston and I'm going to put it on here temporarily so that you can see how this goes together. I can't see it. There we go. I'm on the wrong side. I can't see what I'm doing. Duh, come on now. Why are you being so difficult? There we go. Alright, so it's in far enough, it clears over here. So, this is all the way out. Um, if I put the head on here, with that single gasket that it came with, you can see that it actually comes about all the way out, which is fine. But, the problem that I'm having is not the extension stroke. The head actually fits on here quite nicely. If 
fully extended and of course there's a head gasket on there but this actually fits nicely on there what my problem that I'm having is is the other stroke the downstroke so we're all the way down right there and if I put this on here like this and that is going to be very hard to see let me grab the camera and see if I can let me see if I can uh, do this better by holding it alright oh yeah oh yeah there we go put it right there perfect okay so as you can see um, and I, like I said, I knew this, buying this, that this doesn't quite fit right. If I zoom in and get some better light inside there. You can see if I pull this out, see how it clears the uh, ports? So I need to come out like almost a sixteenth to clear those ports. And so that right there is the issue. Now all of the ports are like that if I can, if I can actually get it to focus see where the ports hit so I'm too far in for the ports to make it so what that means is I cut some gaskets Ooh. so what I did is I took some uh, gasket material and I went ahead and cut me two of them by hands with a knife, I still have to punch the holes. I, uh, I'm either going to make me a jig and clamp these in a piece of wood and drill them, and or I got to find my hole punch set somewhere. But sometimes when you do the hole punch thing, it's not really all that pleasant. Oh, I can't see it. So if I put these on here, I've, I haven't actually tried this with the piston on here. If I put these on here, they fit really nice. I. Uh, went back and trimmed them very well to make sure that they were very precise and if I put this on here now you can see I clear the port and you're probably not going to be able to see it now the exit ports on the bottom but I'm looking for that top port so the port over in this area um, so I have actually two of them and that original one so if we take one off let's see what one looks like one might actually get it actually one gets it so in theory one is actually perfect so this stuff's pretty high dense uh, dense and it won't really compress very well so I'm just going to put all this stuff back together um, and put the carburetor, the original carburetor back on it and we're just gonna have to uh, to play with it and see how we look so how do we look with uh, single gasket I don't know exactly how much headroom this is supposed to have but uh, there's a little lip there it's bringing it out, this is a sixteenth thick um, gasket material so one of them actually looks pretty good for what I want so I'll probably just use one but uh, I can take this back apart very simply and add the other one and find out if it works better or worse and that's about it so that's all for installment number five I guess um, I may go ahead and assemble all of this and tag it on to the end so I think that's a good idea we'll see you shortly in about a week and a half when I get this thing together.
I did the math. I set the torque wrench. And then I snapped off two of the bolts. Not good. <sighs> One day at a time. snapped them off <sighs> guess I'll see if I can get them out I don't know what else to do at this point let's just say I'm not real happy but I guess that's part of life isn't it uh, what a bad day Well, I got them out. They're right there. But one thing's for sure. Hey, run. I wish I was excited as this. Hey, Dexter, run in circles. Hurry up. Come on. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. Hurry up. Come on, hurry up. Go. That's about how my head feels right now. That right there. That's how my head feels. You ready to go? Okay. Oh. Well that was fun. My battery went dead so I had a little bit of funny issues going on. So I took the old bolts out of the uh, exhaust and put them on the new exhaust. Um, they fit so that worked out well. The exhaust actually does fit without being in the way of the kickstand which was a complaint. Um, now when you put the kickstand up it might hit it. So what I'm thinking about doing is this just clamps onto this pipe so what I'm thinking about doing is just getting another piece of pipe and maybe uh, you know doing something sticking out the side or something like this to where you can still get this up because when this comes up I think it's gonna hit I had to bend this out of the way this wire catch just to get it to fit in the right spot so I uh, should probably bend that back and uh, I don't remember what wire even went there, but uh, what I'm probably going to do is end up making something for this portion. You know, something like that. I don't know. I have to play with it, but the exhaust fits. Um, I shimmed this side. See, I can't see the light. Uh, I shimmed this side, and then this side over here already has a... Uh, a notch cut out um, where are we at there we are a notch cut out in the top and then the other one didn't so I just shimmed it over because these are bendable this is stainless steel so yeah rocking out the uh, 
circuit exhaust on the uh, Honda Hobbit. Let's see. It actually sounds pretty good if you listen to it. I'm going to set this down because I'll end up dropping it. You can listen to it. You can hear it breathe. It's ready to fire up, man. Can you hear that little squeak? That little squeak is the reeds. <laughs> well, there you go. The end. So that's it. Um, I'm going to put the rest of the bike together. I'll give you a quick look around. We'll see where we go from there. Woot woot. I'm ready to fire this sucker up. I did get, uh, didn't tell you this yet, I got hex bolts. Um, that are the hardened, uh, oil hardened and tempered, um, so that way I didn't stretch them out again. If I overdo it this time, it'll be a bad deal and I'll end up just ruining, um, ruining the inside of this engine block, so. Um, the torque setting I used was right at 100 inch pounds, and I was trying to tighten them down to about 240, because I miscalculated Actually, I didn't miscalculate. I just was misunderstood on uh, what I was trying to accomplish. I was taking standard uh, increments and not torque increments and calculating them. That was my mistake. Learn and try over. I got lucky. I got them out um, and got that fixed. So now, yeah, we're about ready. Fire this thing up. Put it back on this and... I think I'm ready. The only thing I gotta do is get a filter, an oil or a uh, air filter. Currently, if we can get this air filter out. Currently, there's no air, there's no air filter in there. See it? You can see through it. There's supposed to be an air filter in there. Um, so I'm going to get some air filter material and make my own, because um, or buy an original stock. But for testing, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it off, and once I get it running, I'll have to tune it with the filter in it. But I just want to see what happens. See if we can even get this thing to run. Yeah.